I would like to now call on our final discussant, Rob Voss, who is the Director of the Markets, Trade, and Institutions Division here at IFBRI. Rob? Uh, thank you, and uh, <coughs> thank you, Fleur and Natalia, for very interesting and good presentations. Actually, um, we look back a bit of the origin of the, re the, the current trends in social protection. We've come a long way. Right? It's not that long ago that cash transfers and thinking about social protection in conjunction with agricultural development, rural development, poverty reduction um, came about. And it's, it's basically the end of the 1990s when because of several financial crises in Latin America, the Asian financial crisis, so this shift came, so why don't we think of other types of programs, particularly cash transfers linked to certain conditions to avoid people when they face an economic shock that they de disinvest in their human capital. That was the main driver of doing that because that was the first thing that happened during those crises that uh, because of drops in income, people took their children from school, they stopped going to health centers and so on. So. Um, there was a major So if you look at these results and these findings, that's, it's a major advancement and, and I would agree a lot of the positive effects. And uh, <coughs> uh, some, some of you may not know that, but uh, I was um, uh, only six years ago appointed as the first director of social protection at FAO, which was a big struggle at the time because it was not something member states or even lot, large parts of, of FEO were thinking about, where, why would FEO be even thinking about social protection? So, um, and the, diff the discussions were there, and then we had to show all this evidence that's shown here, and a lot of the also earlier evidence that, uh, that here at IFPRI was, was generated uh, by people like John Hodinot and, and others. Um, <clears throat> so there was a major move, and, and eventually it was accepted that there should be such a such a division. Um, so that was the first um, issue I had to deal with. Uh, and then, um, since it was in the middle of that, the division was actually called the Division of Social Protection, which actually disagreed with, uh, for reasons I'll explain in a minute, because it gave the impression as if social protection would be either the means or a particular singular mean that could drive to these better outcomes. And what I wanted to show uh, or to see happen is that it was really embedded in the broader agriculture and rural development uh, policies. So let me make a few comments on, on what was said. So I think the, the approaches are right and, and, and both Fleur and Natalia have emphasized this issue of synergies with other programs, uh, broader coherence. but. I think in, in practice it's still a lot more difficult than it seems. So a lot of the um, coherence we see with the life loots programs and with uh, uh, providing productive assets to, to the poor and, uh, and that kind of alignment, it's very much fought through in most cases in practice uh, that I have seen um, from the targeted uh, approach towards the poor, towards the vulnerable households. Um, as either local or very specific um, programs and uh, look for the synergies there, which are good, they're important, right? So it's like some countries found the hard, out the hard way where you obviously need coherence if you condition your cash transfer to sending children to school and then you fill the schools with a lot more children, um, but then there are enough, not enough teachers, not enough teaching materials, you don't invest at the same time then you lack that coherence. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's important to think through more broadly on the broader front. Uh, so first, uh, what do we want the social protection to do? So it's become a lot more, how can we push harder on the productive uh, side such that we get bigger poverty impacts? But are we doing that in practice? So take a sort of recent study on Zambia, and uh, Ashu mentioned the Zambian case, so let's mention that here as well, which actually suggested that the, um, despite the growth of that program, the actual impact on poverty is very small, the direct impact. It's like one or one and a half percent point in, in poverty reduction. 
And the same study also shows that if you would redesign that program such that it becomes, uh, say, a universal old age program and covering uh, disabilities, it would have doubled the poverty reduction impact. Now, I'm not saying that's the right choice to make, but it does make you think on the broader front, so what are we designing the programs for and are we spending it cost effectively? Now, um, two um, final points um, on coherence, and hopefully that will stimulate some further discussion. Uh, one is not to think through um, sort of the more specific targeted policies and how they can be aligned with, um, with social protection. I think that's important, but even more important is how they're aligned with broader agriculture development policies. So take big programs, a lot of African countries around the world, input subsidies, right? If you want to achieve with your social protection programs that households can manage the risks better, also invest more in agriculture inputs, why not, give an, why not use an input subsidy program? Well, that would be much more direct to get that effect. Now, I'm not saying that's the solution, but that's the way you should think, because a lot more money goes into those programs. And if those programs are not well aligned with um, the objectives of the social protection programs, then you may not get the effects. And like also applies for input subsidies, if the markets don't work well, such that the productivity effect of input subsidies cannot materialize because your transportation infrastructure, your storage in infrastructure, and your general market institutions don't work well, then you may not get uh, that same Im impact. So we need a coherence with the larger, broader agriculture and rural development policies. And actually I would say what the coherence should be about is the inverse thinking. Right, so now the thinking is too much in practice, like uh, we have these successful cash transfer programs and they, uh, uh, we know how to target them, uh, we know how to link them to livelihoods programs, but then still they may stay um, uh, short of what's needed if you don't inverse the thinking, saying, well, what should be our agriculture and rural development policies? How can we make social protection effective uh, within that context? I have more to say, but I've run over my time. Thank you very much. <laughs>